Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasty Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I am joined, as always, by Rob Henderson. Hello. And I am Brian Black. Uh, today, I wanted to walk through something that I kind of just went through, which was getting out and kayaking. Um, I have talked before about kind of the Klepper long-haul hybrid kayak that I use. Um, and I took a photo when I was out there kayaking this last weekend, and kind of generated some some questions as far as what kind of kayak is that where do you get it like what where did that come from so I wanted to briefly kind of talk about a little bit of the history of kayaks and the folding kayaks in that regard um, and kind of the military usage of them and kind of how I came about wanting one it was because of the uh, a, an old popular mechanics article from nice a long long time ago probably like 92 or something like that so it showed this pair of green berets on a Klepper kayak floating down a river, and it was the little subhead under it said, you know, riverine Klepper operations or something like that. And I never knew what it meant. Yeah. And I never knew that word Klepper meant the kayak. And, yeah. you know, as I grew up, and, I mean, I was pretty young then, but as I got into the military and stuff like that, I kind of realized that those folding kayaks were not only folding, but they were used by special forces for. Mm-hmm you know, riverine operations and stuff Which like that. Which is just so cool. Yeah, it's very I cool. I never would have considered that. Now, I will say they're supposed to be two-man capable, like packable by two people, and I would struggle my ass off to carry one of those two bags because it does yeah. fit into two bags. I it's, will give them that. It's a two-bag system. Well, <laughs> however, yeah. however, if those... If you don't care about your yeah, pack. Yeah, those bags are... Are crazy. I couldn't um, imagine that in addition to the other line gear you're carrying. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's minus anything else. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. Like no just, guns, no mags, Jerry no. is just taking yeah. a kayak <laughs> right. half. Yeah. But anyway, the development of, of Kleppers kind of came from an original German architecture student who developed them in 1905, and then 1906, this guy named Klepper kind of patented, well, the patent kind of came from the architecture student in 1905, but then Klepper built his first commercially available kayak. So it's like kayak, a brand. Yeah, um, in 1906. So mm-hmm. he was the one that kind of first took it commercial, um, and Klepper became a company, and they've been manufacturing ever since. So like 1906 is when they started manufacturing. Um, and they're still making them in Germany to this day. Man. However, they have you know a North American Klepper, and different mm-hmm. countries have their own Klepper divisions and things like that. And that's actually where... Um, the story changes a little bit because there's a company now called Long Haul Folding Kayaks. Uh, a guy named Mark runs that. He's a super cool guy. I've talked to him on the phone quite a few times as I was assembling mine and kind of getting it together. Um, a friend of mine had an old Dermo Klepper frame. So basically all the wood pieces that make up the frame that, that fold together to make the kayak, that's the part he had, uh, but he didn't have the skin for it. So it was a Arius 2 model, and that's the the model of Klepper, it was. It's a two-seater, so two people can... Do you have any idea when it was produced? The uh, frame? I'm just curious. I don't. I mean, so the origin of when SF probably started using those probably dates back to, like, World War II. Um, so Kleppers kind of became popular as, you know, a military or military usage mm-hmm. back in World War II. So I don't know if Special Forces themselves have been using them that long. I don't know when this one was made. Yeah. I really have no idea. I think the Arius, okay, well, I do know this. I think the Arius 2 model was introduced sometime in the late 50s. Okay. So it would have had so to it'll been, be between there yeah, and now. 50, wow. Maybe that's 56 cool. through, well, yeah, 56 through like the probably the early 2000s. That's just cool that it could be that old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, they will last forever as long as they're treated right, because mm-hmm. there's a, a you know a urethane coating over all the wood, so keeps it from rotting. Yeah, and it's made with good wood too. That's not going to rot. Um, I I can't remember what it's made with birch or 
something. I know that cedar doesn't rot, but there's another kind of, there's another wood that I think this is made out of. But anyway, the way that it works is that there are ribs, they are called ribs, that go into the center of the boat. And then there are gunnels or gunwales. Those are the side that pieces. That always confuses yeah. me. <laughs> um, and those kind of, it, it's kind of an interesting system when you see it all put together because you basically assemble the bow and the stern separately and then put them into the skin and then make they join together in the middle and you clamp this piece down and then push out the sides and then bam you got a boat and you put in the extra you put in the extra um, ribs to to finish creating it um, and then you know other parts go on and the skin kind of seats into the into the top there but they make all kinds of accessories for them you can even sail with them so there's actually a, a circular For like hole. a mast? Yeah, for oh, a mast. That's you cool. can actually turn it into a sailboat, like a little mini sailboat, which is pretty cool. Interesting. Um, I haven't gotten that far with yeah. it. I did mount a little compass board on mine, so I knew kind of where I was going. Um, I love navigation stuff like that, so of yeah. course I have a compass on it. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the history of, you know, how mine came to be is that, you know, I got that Dermo um, assembly from my, my buddy, and I had to make some repairs on it, so it wasn't re- you know it wasn't seaworthy at the time. I had to kind of repair a few things that were broken and falling off, and things like that, um, or dented, or things like that. So I, I bought some urethane and paint um, from Long Haul because they make you know specific repair parts. So through that, I started you know talking with Mark and um, asking him questions. So I found Getting out that, going. yeah, so he. He actually used to be a North American rep, or the only North American rep for Klepper, um, and his business, Long Haul Floating Kayaks, grew out of frustration with Klepper because he had a problem importing parts, and it, it was probably like dealing with HK or something yeah, like just that. Decided you know, just decided to do his own yeah, thing. Right. So he was like, you know, I can do this better, yeah. and he started making his own folding kayak frames as well as skins. So the skins themselves... Um, are interchangeable so the skins that they make you can put on an areas too or you can put on his frame that he makes that's pretty cool yeah so i've actually really wanted to one of these days buy a new frame from him because i really love the history of the klepper frame but it's janky like it (laughs) like i mean it's old and it squeaks you know and i mean it works it's it's cool to get out on, and I love the history yeah, behind it. But the skin is much more yeah. high tech looking than the yes. frame. Because when you were first putting the frame together, I was like, "What are we? Is this like a steamship? Yeah. Like, what are yeah. you? What are you doing here?" No, maybe one of these days I'll, I'll buy that new interior and I'll, I'll assemble the 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 skeleton and hang it up somewhere or something. So that would be cool. It does cool. look like a fish skeleton. That's yeah, what I was gonna it say. Really when does. you were talking about ribs, it really does remind me of yeah. a fish skeleton of how it comes together. Yeah, the design is really neat. Um, and the way it assembles and how it's packable. And so they say you can assemble in about 20 minutes, but I've never <laughs> done it any less than 30. Uh, 30 is probably my best time. This last time, um, it had been a while and I goofed up a couple of things and had to start again. So <laughs> it took me like 45 minutes to, to do it this time. I mean, especially if you just hauled out that stuff on your back. Yeah. Now your back hurts. And now yeah. you got to do it in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not humping that stuff. It goes in a vehicle. And yeah. It, well, that's what's cool, though, is that, you know, it can fold up in a vehicle and you can transport it somewhere rather than, um, you know, rather than putting it on top of your car and having to tie it down or something like that. And that's when you first told me about it, I thought, what, what's the point of it mm-hmm. folding? But that is, it's a true thing. I mean, um, you know, I've got family that has a canoe. Uh-huh. It's a full, not foldable canoe. It's really difficult to transport that because you have to either tie it down to the top or whatever. This one yep. just packs right in the back. Well, what's great about it too is you could technically ship it or you could travel with it, you know, if you wanted to pay the luggage fees to, <laughs> to get it around. But those two bags could fit on a plane like that. Sure. That's legit luggage that yeah. you could check, you know, on a plane and, and be able to fly with that. So um, it's pretty cool once it all gets put together. And I really like the the seats comfortable to me. Um, I did get some seats from Long Haul. So the seats that are in it aren't original. Uh, the original Klepper seats are, are super uncomfortable. They're like little pads that yeah, it's it's terrible. Not a good experience. Uh, no, um, I think they're called the comfort seats or something that long haul <laughs> makes, but they really are cool. You can you can adjust them, and it's got it's basically the same technology as an inflatable ground pad from camping. So they've got you know a, a valve on it where you can squeeze all the air out, so they can pack down. But smaller. then add some more cushion. With yeah, the air. exactly. So they're pretty cool. Nice. Um, 
and it's a two seater, which is great because you can you can have two people paddling at the same time. Um, is it manageable with one though? Oh yeah, so yeah. Just and it's fast. Yeah. So not only is it you know can you paddle yourself and and make it fast because it's sixteen feet. It's it's a yeah, long it's sucker. Huge. Yeah. Um, and it dwarfs most kayaks. You know when when you're pulled up next to it, but. Um, but it's a beast on the water. It, you can actually move really quick. Um, and that's due a lot to the rudder system because it's got foot control. So it's got pedals that run their way back to cables and each side, you know, I guess starboard and port, mm-hmm. you've got to control you know, that's to convenient. make the rudder yeah, move. And then you've got a little line on the side to my right um, or to starboard since we're talking about ships um, where you can actually pull up the, the rudder as you're going into shore. So if you want to you know Ah, so it doesn't hit on anything right exactly cool yeah so that's pretty neat you can pull up and drop the rudder when you want to so it's a lot of fanciness for a kayak it really is i mean it takes a while to put together and it's it's a lot of work uh but once it's together and you actually get to use it it's really it's really pretty neat you realize the what you're able to do with it you can haul a a crap load of gear too because what's cool about that skin that long haul made is it's got load ports so it's got two little yeah, those are so cool. circular um, holes, basically, in the skin that kind of wrap over and are watertight still, though. Um, and you can pack your stuff into that. So I could put everything for, like, a camping trip. Yeah, and you get, like, a sandwich in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I've strapped a cooler before in the front seat when I'm, you know, paddling by myself. It doesn't really need a ballast like that, like mm-hmm. weight in the front, because um, I've, I've done it just fine without, without that weight. I don't feel like it makes it easier with that, but it's just kind of an option. Mm-hmm. And cooler, a little cooler fits perfect in, the, in that front seat. So, but it's pretty neat. Uh, the, I guess we could kind of go into like the accessories, you know, that I carry when I'm kayaking, since that's kind of yeah. gear wise. Yeah, I was gonna say like, what are your essential? Yeah. So I actually, on this last trip with the kayak, I had a buddy or a couple buddies that went with me and. One of them had a spare paddling life jacket, and I've never used a paddling life jacket before, but basically what it is is it's it's built up foam on the front, but then it's if you can imagine like a sappy plate from a plate okay. like from a you know hard armor. Yeah. It looks like that almost. So it's cut on the sides. Oh. It tapers. So it's for mobility. Right, exactly. Uh. So you've got the mobility to paddle. Yeah, because it sucks with paddling hands. with a regular yes. life jacket. Yeah, so and I've been doing that the whole time, and I borrowed his, and I was like, oh, my God, this is great. So I really want to pick one up now. Um, I think I think there's a that Coke Attack company that does the mask suit. I think they've got some uh, that I'm going to look into. But it's just – it's a cool design, and I really like it. And his were kind of neat because you can mount a GoPro to the front of it. Oh, that's cool. It's actually got the mount included. but Interesting. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So you start with a life jacket? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's essential. Uh, to me, actual – Actually, uh, essential stuff would be really more a boonie hat. Um, mm-hmm. I because when you're out on the lake, you know you get the reflection from the water, you get sun like crazy, and I actually got a little bit of a sunburn. I'm kind of mad at myself this time, but um, but yeah, a boonie hat is essential, and because of that, I only had a sunburn kind of on the edges of my shoulders <laughs> rather than not in the boonie hat area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So an old GI boonie hat that's, uh, I use one that's like kind of woodland camo that mm-hmm. I've had forever. Um, and it's perfect because yeah. it's got a really long brim I was say, on they got it. the big wide yeah. brim, not the, yeah. the recce caps. Yeah, you know, don't need one of those little short suckers. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's essential to me. Same with sunscreen. Um, I really swear by that Kinesis stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I got a little bit of a sunburn this time, that was my own fault for not reapplying. So, I mean, we were out there for, God, four or five hours. Oh, so, yeah, that'll you know, get you. Yeah. And we were stopping every once in a while and possibly drinking a beer and, you know, getting in the water and uh, things like that. So we would pull over and hang out and things like that. So that through that, I think, you know, just being in the water was washing off, too. Plus, you know, the moving, taking the life jacket on and off kind of rubs off sunscreen and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, too. So, yeah, sunscreen, boonie hat, life jacket. Those are three pretty big essentials. Water is a huge one. Um Obviously, I had a cooler in the front with some stuff, but water was, like, right by me. And I dummy cord in absolutely everything. So anything that could fall out if the kayak flipped is dummy corded. Um, and that's essential for me. And I do that before I even take the kayak down to the water. Um, yep. And I've got – basically what I've got is type 1 paracord or dummy cord 
that's pretty tied everywhere to the boat to the boat okay. frame. Um, actually, it's tied to the skin. So whenever I put the skin in, they're already there. Nice. And I just basically that's a good idea. tie in with the bow line anything that I need. I've got like four of them. So one is I've actually got two Nalgene's that I carry. So they're both on lanyards or dummy. They're dummy corded. Uh, then I have a bilge pump, so it's a little mini bilge pump, so I can, if water mm. comes in the kayak, I can just pump it out really easily and, and quickly. And that's hand-operated? Yep. Cool. Yep. And then I've got this sponge case, so it's like this thing called a super sorb sponge or super sponge or something, but it's great for, like, just getting small amounts of water out. So the bilge pump can be a little bulky if you don't really have standing water that's a good depth to get the pump in. yeah it's really tough to to get water out sponge so, is a good idea yeah and it holds it just has a ton of capability when it comes to water so um yeah those are like the four main things and then i always have a dry bag with me um that i put all my other stuff in and that's already got a piece of dummy cord on the bag itself and then i tie that in too um so those are kind of like my essentials and then you know in that bag i've typically got a, you know, change of clothes if I need it. I've got uh, food, snacks, uh, more sunscreen that I didn't put on this last time. <laughs> um, you know, keys, wallet, things like that go into there. So, and it's a really good watershed dry bag. Mm -hmm. So it's got a nice seal on it. It rolls over, and there's just no way it's going to get um, it's going to get water. Can't in beat it the peace of mind of a dry bag. Yes, and a really good dry bag yeah. at that. Um, you know, you can get those smaller dry bags that are thin and I just, even though I've used them extensively in camping and stuff and I trust them, there's just something about a over the top yep. watershed dry bag that I just, I have to have overkill. when I do, yeah, when, when I do water stuff like that, I just sure. have to have something like that. That's complete overkill. Um, I mean, it's got the, the relief valve in there to inflate it or let air out of the bag. Yeah. Those are cool. Yeah. So it's pretty neat. Those are, those are kind of the essentials. I mean, so one thing I did want to mention that I forgot is when it comes to paddles. That's what I was just about to ask. You, this is kind of a, a rule of thumb that, I, that I've learned through kayaking is that you always want to buy the best paddle you can, not the best kayak you can necessarily. Because you will upgrade your kayak as you see fit and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I want this feature and it doesn't have it, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but paddles will move with you throughout you know, different kayaks. So it's, it's worth it to buy a really good paddle. So Werner is a company that makes really good paddles. Um, I still have not purchased those. I kind of did it opposite. Um, I should have <laughs> so bought this is the a paddles. Lesson learned. Yes, it yeah. is a lesson learned. So it's one I want to pass on. Um, so the paddles are expensive They're, You're probably looking like 300 bucks a piece for a good carbon fiber Dang. paddle. Um, and that's low. Like you, mm -hmm. they can go up to like 1200 or 1500 bucks. So <laughs> Um, Warner makes a two piece paddle because I have to have a two piece paddle because of how everything packs down. Mm -hmm. So the paddle has to, to, to yeah, fit. the paddle has to, um, basically come apart in half and, and fit into the bag with everything else. Um, but that's my next thing that I, I would like to do is upgrade that. And I also want to start carrying a more extensive spare parts kit for the kayak. So Just right now, all the essential yeah, items. right now I've got some stuff. Um, that I could use in a pinch to fix the frame or, or patch a hole if I needed to in the skin, um, because that could mean the end of a trip. Well, sure, obviously. Yeah. It could mean the end of my kayak if right. I don't watch it, you know? Um, I, I mean, I literally try to probably swim that to shore if yeah. <laughs> something happened, but, um, but that's what the bilge pump is for too. You know, if, yeah. if water was seeping in at a, at a high rate and I had two people, one person could still paddle to the shore. Why? You know, the yeah. other was furiously working the bilge for, pump. For what would be a yes. very comedic thing to watch but not be a part of. Yeah, exactly. So do you carry spare paddles? Uh, I have one spare. Well, I mean, I have two paddles. Okay, so, so whether both people are paddling. Yeah, then I don't have a paddle. Okay. I don't have a spare. But that's the good thing about two paddles mm -hmm. is that if one goes overboard, and I actually have, I forgot to t say this too, I have leashes on the paddles. Okay, that was my yes. next question is yes. how are they yes. or, uh, attached? Yeah, I've actually found a, a pretty cool leash that's basically like an elastic webbing type leash. So it's got elastic that allows it to bungee mm. almost inside a piece of tubular webbing almost, something like that. Gotcha. Um, and then those are just girth hitched to the paddle and then clipped in okay. through these little mini carabiners. I would be so terrified yeah. to drop a paddle. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's why I got them. Because yeah. the first time I ever used a kayak, I didn't have one. And I was like, oh, my God, I really need to get a leash. But, yeah. 
I, I, I realized that paddle leashes are a thing. And yeah. <laughs> people use them for a reason. And I also picked up, after a couple of times using it, some paddling gloves. So they're little half-finger hmm. um, gloves that are just padded a little bit. Just to so, help with friction. Yeah, because you do get blisters if you're paddling for mm-hmm. a long time, no matter what the paddle is you're using. Um, you will get blisters. So that's kind of a, a tip, too. Um, and then, you know... I guess that sunglasses are a big thing too. Mm-hmm. Um, I like wearing polarized glasses when I'm out on the water because of the reflection and the glare. Uh, it really helps cut down on that. And I would suggest wearing one of those little dorky sunglass lanyards too, uh, so that when you take off your sunglasses, you don't lose them. Yeah. Um, ask me how I know. <laughs> I have lost a pair before like that. Actually, did something stupid when I was much younger. I used to wear Arnett sunglasses back when they were the heat back in the day the uh i actually jumped off a boat into the water i like dove head first in the water with a pair of sunglasses on like, right yeah. off just yeah. pops like, right off and they weren't even mine so i felt horrible i had to buy the guy a new pair yeah. and like i didn't even i had to buy a new pair of sunglasses and i didn't even have them <laughs> so anyway mother ocean guts those <laughs> mother dirty lake yeah got those. <laughs> yeah um and i just typically will paddle in a life jacket and sometimes I'll wear a shirt sometimes I won't in a life jacket and if I do wear one I'll wear it like some kind of wicking shirt that'll dry easily Mm -hmm. um and if there's really a lot of sun I'll wear a long sleeve Mm -hmm. like a almost like a like a wetsuit top not like a wetsuit top what are those called like a rash guard like a long sleeve like like surf surf, yeah like a surf rash guard I'll wear something like that that's long sleeve if I'm going to be out there a long time um, and then that plus a boonie hat will typically be enough to cover myself from the sun. Sure. Um, and I'll typically wear board shorts or something like that. And then I've got these Solomons that are water shoes. And I can't remember the, the actual name of the model, but I'll put it in the episode intel. Uh, but I love those things. They're just, they're super cool. I took them on a, I first bought them for a river trip I did with uh, uh, PEW and Patrick so we hiked up the Big Sur River and camped and stuff like that. And I, you know, we, we had to hike through the, the river. I mean, yeah. there wasn't a choice. Just right in the water. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. I wore, wore a bunch of Arcteric stuff that dried really easily, that tweave material stuff, mm-hmm. um, as well as those Solomons. And I was perfectly fine. Nice. You know, the only thing you got to worry about is, you know, having waterlogged feet and stuff like that. But if you can stop, you yeah. know, after a while Get and let time your to feet dry. dry. Yeah. Cool. It's good. But. Yeah, those are kind of my my kayaking tips and essentials, and um, I've used quite a few kayaks, whether they're kind of sit-on-top ocean kayaks or foldable, packable ones like I have now. Um, I really like it. I think it's cool to get out in the water and just kind of be around nature and stuff like that, but um, one last thing is that I always carry red and green chem lights with me if I'm out at night because you always want to mark the boat. That's kind of a deal with boats in the water. That's right side red. No, right side is green. That doesn't yeah. make sense, but okay. <laughs> yeah, and then left is red. So starboard is green, and okay. left is port, which is red. So nice. I don't know how I remember that, but some kind of star thing. But <laughs> cool. Anyway, yeah, that's kayaks. All right, thanks for listening to Gear Tasting Radio. Remember, if you got questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting and any social media network, and we will find them and get them answered. I kind of found those kayak questions from the post that we did on instagram so that's mm-hmm. kind of how i kind of incorporated those so even I tried. if you don't pound tag them i know we'll take them we'll take them <laughs> yeah we'll find them um and then also check out our episode intel i i've got a video that we did um on the assembly of a clip of my clepper kayak so you can kind of see how things get assembled if you're curious about how those kayaks get put together um, and then I mentioned some other things I'll put in the episode into a tell as well. Uh, but sh- be sure to subscribe while you're on Apple Podcasts. We would very much appreciate your subscription. Um, and if you would consider giving us a five-star review while you're there, you will very much help out the show, get recommended to new people on the Apple Podcast Network. Uh, last but not least, check out our crew leader membership. We've got details, again, in the episode intel on that. That's our membership that allows us to give you back something in return. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.